Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. This time, instead of just going over gear placements on lead, we're going to be going over um, anchors I've built over eight different pitches. And of course, as always, I'm joined by Bridget. Hello. So, just like always, feel free to leave a comment on whether or not you thought it was a good anchor, a bad anchor, something that you thought could be done to improve it. And throughout the video, I'll be giving we will be giving our commentary and uh, looking at the placements and the anchors retroactively. So this first anchor is going to be started off on a 0.75 and a nut. That nut looks a little shallow, but I'm pretty okay. <laughs> just a little. But I'm pretty sure it was really good. I remember the I remember placing it, thinking, "Oh wow, it's so bomber." Um, I like to try to build anchors in multiple cracks if possible, almost like uh, providing extra insurance to the anchor. So, like if one cracks bad, the other one hopefully is not as bad. Exactly, exactly. So it's like diversifying your portfolio type business, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Mhm. Mm so, uh, most of the anchors in this video are gonna be pretty standard for what I like to do, uh, using the cordelette on one end with a figure eight on a bite, and then the other end a clove hitch, so I can adjust it like you saw right there. And then I almost always end with a figure eight on a bite as a master point or a, like you know like a cat's nine or like a bfk whatever you like to call it just like a figure eight with like tons of loops over it to get rid of extra material i did end up including a a nice <laughs> little uh, sport anchor yeah just so people could you know get out of the way no, it's I've easy. Had people ask how do you build these mm -hmm. and it's super easy just two carabiners clip the strand make a figure eight on a bite master point and then you're good to go as long as you clip something into the point the point at the end so it doesn't slip through Master point. Mm -hmm. um, I find like this type of anchor is very standard in Joshua Tree. Uh -huh. uh, when you're on the top of a dome and you're just like groveling on the ground and you're laying on your side and your belly trying to trying squeeze to gear. Find a piece. Yeah, underneath <laughs> a big boulder. This is a bomber, uh, huge, huge boulder, so it's not going anywhere and it's taking gear well. Yeah, it looks like beautiful pieces too. Yeah, th this is definitely one of my, f in the of the eight anchors in this video, this is definitely one that I think is the most solid. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Not that the other ones aren't solid, just that this one is so, you know. I think they've all been solid yeah. so far. Ooh, I almost dropped that in the water. <laughs> that would have been a bad day. I've been grody. Imagine dropping your cordelette in the only puddle in the entire desert. <laughs> bad luck. <laughs> it's just not much water out there. Yeah, but yeah here we are again with another... Uh, master point figure eight on a bite. You can see good the figure eight and the clove mm -hmm. on the carabiners there. I'm still just gonna stick by it. So we have a little discussion. Bridget thinks that this uh, number three is overcammed, just because the the tips of the cam lobes look like they're overlapping just a little bit. But it's a number three. It's a big cam. Yeah. It's got a huge range. Um. I personally don't think it's overcammed, but she does. So let us know what you think in the comments below. I'm sure it'll catch you still. I'm just saying, like, typically, I would think. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, overcammed cams are still going to catch you. It's just oh. that they're going to get stuck. But it, it came out easily when I broke down the anchor. But then it was followed by a number two. Anyways, it was followed <laughs> by, a, by a good number two and a good number, a good 0.75. And then the same style of anchor for the cordelette. I gotta say, the first time I saw that, I thought, I just can't trust that clove hitch. I'm a little scared. Mm. But then over time, I've like grown to really like that method. Yeah, well, the clove hitch is so awesome because it is. you can adjust it and it makes... So if you're not using a clove hitch as your uh, your personal anchor when you're on like a multi-pitch, I feel like you're messing up because it's so convenient, so easy. Anyways, we digress. Here's a sweet, <laughs> here's a sweet little chicken head. Um, it's a basket hitch on That's the cordelette. That's a big chicken head. It's, yeah, it's huge. This is a giant yeah. chicken head. It's a, so it ends up being a basket hitch notch with a master point being made out of a BFK, which is just like a looped over figure eight. What does BFK stand for? A big F and knot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a sweet chicken head. It's not going anywhere. And here's another unique little anchor, um, the body belay. As you can tell, no real exertion of force on my body. Um... You could tell I was in a little like cave, a clove behind like some boulders and in a recess on the summit. 
And I feel like Joshua Tree really presents itself for a lot of a lot of body blades when you top out on domes. It just makes it so efficient. Um, you don't have to use as much gear. You're not using any gear. Mm -hmm. You get to build it right away because you just slap it on, pull the rope out. That makes sense. Yeah, and you just as long as you're situationally aware, I feel like body blades are awesome in Joshua yeah. Tree. I like them. Mm -hmm. The one time I did it with you. Yeah. I, it's a personal favorite for me. I was a little nervous because I was like, he's so big though. Yeah. But, but it, it works. wasn't bad at all. Yeah. And then here's another efficient anchor. Two pieces. One sling. Um, bomber. One and two. I typically usually go for three pieces. Yeah? Not but just one? Not just two pieces. Or not just one piece even. But uh, this time I only had those two cams that fit. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I usually go for either no pieces or I go for three pieces. There's yeah. So go home, yeah. Baby. But uh, this is another bomber anchor here, in my opinion. Beautiful views. Oh my god, I miss Joshua Tree. I can't believe it's already too hot. I know. So here's our last anchor of the video. Starts off with a nice point seven five and a one. Oh, and this is red rock sandstone. So that's why it's a little different. A little different. Mm -hmm. And then we got another one. But I think I noticed right away, I'm like, oh, I could put a 0. .5 up higher. And I do. Ooh, a uh, purple totem. Mm, good old totem. Uh-huh. And uh, I like to have my, yeah. <laughs> I like to have my cams as high as possible so that my anchor point is as high as possible. So it's just more comfortable on my body when I'm belaying my follower. Do you have a cam in your mouth right now? I have a lot of things in my mouth. <laughs> but again. Looking good. Mm -hmm. Looking good. Again, just finishing up on your standard, or at least standard for me, standard for mm -hmm. us. Anchor, cordelette, figure eight on a bite. That's always there. And the clove hitch to adjust with a figure eight master point. Boom. And it's good to go. And that's our last anchor. Um. We hope you enjoyed the video. Mm -hmm. If you did, let us know. Um, maybe next time we'll include different types of material, different types of um, styles for anchors, maybe using the rope, because I love using the rope too. Just yeah, didn't like get a chance that. to show that. I think that would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks for watching. And hopefully we'll see you guys outside. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. <laughs>